Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jennifer Jenkins. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to be doing a Q&A today. And these are questions that I just came up with myself. Um, and they're just questions that that I would love you guys to answer. I'd love other, you know, creators in the mature community to answer. And if you are, if you are a creator and you answer these questions or you do this tag, um, you do not have to give me credit for these questions or anything like that. I did not, I don't own these questions. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I felt like these are questions that I would love to hear the answers to from other women my age. So this is going to be like a Q and A for, you know, us old chicks. I'm just kidding. We're not old, are we? Well, we kind of are, you know, it's all relative. Whenever I was younger, if I knew that somebody was 48 or 49 years old, I'm going to be 49 in a couple months. Um, they were considered old to me, you know, that's just, that's just how it goes. You know, um, even, you know, whenever I was 16, if somebody was 30, they were considered old to me. You know, I'm, I'm sure that if you are in your seventies, you probably consider me to be young, you know, like I said, it's all relative, but I feel like these questions, a lot of them are for women, you know, my age or older. So anyway, while you're watching this video, I would love for you guys to pick like three to five questions to answer in my comment section. I would love to read the answers. You know, some of these are just very kind of superficial, kind of on the surface. And then some of the questions are a little, go a little bit deeper, you know, and might be, I don't know, maybe a little bit personal. And so anyway, I just thought, I thought that this would be a good way to just break up you know, things. I was going to actually do an empties video. I've got my empties right here, but I don't know. I don't want every video of mine to seem like an infomercial, you know, or, um, or like I'm trying to sell you something. Everything that I talk about on my channel actually are things that I would talk about with my sisters or my best friends when I'm on the phone with them. Like I, we always share, skincare secrets. We're always, if we find a good bargain, we are always sharing, you know, bargains and stuff like that. Um, and so, and that's what I do here. You know, I do all the same things that I would do in my personal life with my sisters or my friends. And, um, but sometimes I feel like you can think that, you know, I'm trying to sell you this outfit or sell you this top or something like that. And I don't want it to always feel like that. And so anyway, I just thought that this Q and A would be kind of fun. You're going to get to know me a little bit. I'm pretty much an open book. So I think that a lot of you probably feel like you know me already because I'm a talker because look at me now. I'm just like, this introduction's already so long. Okay. So I've got my questions right here. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to answer them as fast as I can. Okay. So number one, how old are you? I am 48 years old. I'm going to be 49, um, July 6th. Are you married? If so, how long? Yes, I am married. I have been married since 2004. So it has been, I did the math earlier. It's been 18 years, but I've been with my husband since 1997. And, um, so we've been together, not been together because we did break up for a year when we were dating. And, um, so, but we've known each other for 25 years. We've been together, I guess, 24 years minus that, you know, one year or whatever. Um, how many relationships did you have before you got married? I was um, in two very long relationships before I met my husband. Um, my first relationship started when I was really young. I was 15, 16, 17, and um, I was with him for three years. His name was Troy. And then my second relationship, his name was Brandon, and I was with him for five and a half years. And then that puts me at 22. And then I met my husband at... Um, at 24, I think is when I met my husband, 24. And I did date, you know, a couple of guys in between. Um, but obviously, you know, they were only a couple months long or something like that. And so, and then I met my husband and then, you know, the rest is history. Okay. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. I have two children. I have, um, my daughter who is, she just turned 16. She just started driving. And, um, and then I have my son who is 13. Do you have grandkids? How many? I do not have grandkids. However, I cannot wait to have grandkids. Um, but I'm hoping that it's not for like another 10 years. You know, I would love my daughter to be, um, you know, somewhere around 26, 26 to 30, you know, before she has her first child. Cause, um, because I didn't have my first child until I was 31 years old. Um, and I love, I love that I waited. I, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. You know, I feel like I've had time in all my ages to just really appreciate them and love them. So, um, so, so yeah, I don't have grandkids yet, but I do want some for sure one day. I can't wait. Okay. When you do become a grandparent, what do you want to be called? And, you know, right now in my life, 
I had, well, I had a grandma and I had a grandmother and um, my parents, my mom is Mimi, my stepmom is Nina, and my mother-in-law is grandma. I want to be called grandma. I just want, I just want to be called traditional grandma. I think, I think the word grandma is just such a sweet word and and i want my kids i mean i want my grandkids to call me grandma so are you a dog person or are you a cat person i am definitely a cat girl um i had my cat for 22 years and she passed away and i can tell that i'm getting emotional already talking about it she she passed away in august of 2020 and it's very hard for me to talk about her without getting emotional like i'm feeling like i'm getting emotional right now I cannot, I, I will never ever love an animal like I did her. I just know that. And um, don't get me wrong, I have two dogs and I love my dogs, I do. And I'm very sweet to them and I'm very affectionate with them. But, um, but I'm just, I've never gotten as close to an animal um, like I have my cat. She, she and I were just like, <laughs> Oh no, we just had such a such a special bond and I just I don't think I'll ever have that type of bond with any other animal. Okay, do you have dreams and if you do, do you remember them? I literally feel like I live in an alternate world at night because I have such vivid dreams and yes, I do remember them. Um I especially remember the one that I woke up, you know, to or whatever. Um if I wake up in the middle of the night, then I'll remember, you know, the last dream that I have, and then I'll remember it the next morning. But, um, but I do dream, and um, <laughs> it makes my life so interesting. So uh, I really enjoy going to sleep because it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun at night. <laughs> do you like your name? And if you could change your name, what would you change your name to? And so my name is Jennifer, and I, <laughs> I like the name because I think it sounds very feminine. It's a very feminine-sounding name. However, whenever I was in high school, I, I swear I had a Jennifer in every single one of my classes. There were so many Jennifers at my school. And, um, and so it was just really, really common. My middle name is Aubrey and I, and I named my daughter Aubrey. However, if I could rename myself, which I wouldn't at this age, obviously, but um, if I could have named myself, I would have given myself the name that I gave, the middle name that I gave my daughter, which is Jordis. So her name is Aubrey Jordis Jenkins. And I just think that the name Jordis is such a beautiful name. I actually heard it one time. It was a, I can't remember what, it was like a show, like a singing show, but it wasn't like American Idol. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was more like a band, like a, I don't know. I can't remember. I want to say Dave Navarro was hosting it. But um, anyway, there was a girl on there and she said her name was Jordis. And I was like, jot it down. That's my daughter's middle name, like for sure. I just thought it was just such a beautiful name. So Jordis is what I would name myself. Do you have a nickname? So um, in my family, everyone calls me Jenny. Anybody who's a family member, my aunts, my uncles, my nieces, nephews, sisters, everybody calls me Jenny. There are a few close friends that have called me Jenny However, most everybody else calls me Jennifer. You know, I think the only person who ever called me Jenny that was not um, a family member was my friend Doug. He recently passed away. We were friends for like 20 something years and he always called me Jenny. And I think it's because um, my sister always called me Jenny and we were always kind of together, I don't know. And so anyway, um, and it, but it's, also, it's very odd to me or awkward when somebody calls me Jenny that's not in my family it just feels like, hey, <laughs> you're not allowed to call me Jenny. That that name is, you know, um, reserved for specific people. <laughs> you have to be in my family to call me Jenny. <laughs> However, I never minded my friend Doug calling me Jenny. Um, he was um, he was a very close friend of mine. So either you have to be really really close to me or in my family. But if I just met you and then you call me Jenny, it's just very awkward to me. Where do you want to retire? So um, this one at first, the first thing that came to my mind whenever I thought like, where do I want to retire? I was like somewhere close to a body of water. It either has to be a lake or a beach, preferably a beach. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know, 
I don't care where I, I really don't care where I retire, like specifically, but I definitely want to be near my kids and my grandkids. So wherever they are in the United States, that is probably where we are going to end up. Um, so I'm just, and we've already, my husband and I have already discussed this. Like, I mean, we don't have to be in the same exact city. So if, if our kids, you know, wind up in Texas somewhere, then we might just stay put here. Um, if they like my daughter, she might go to, she might go to Austin, you know, that's where I went to college. And if she does, I don't know that we'll move there. It's only three and a half hours away, but we do want to be close to our, we want to be within driving distance, you know, of our kids and our grandkids. So Okay, do you have several friends or do you just have a few close friends? I have two sisters, first of all, who are my absolute best friends. Like we share everything. I mean, we were born, I've known them since I was born, you know, they are my absolute best friends. And then I have two best friends since um, my friend Melissa, she and I have been friends since we were in the sixth grade. We lived literally right next door to each other. And um, she lives in Missouri. So, we, you know, we don't live close, but every time she comes here, you know, we make it a point to see each other. We do phone happy hour really often. I mean, we talk on the phone, I would say probably once a month. And when we talk on the phone, it's like throughout the night until like midnight or one in the morning, you know, and we start at like five. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's my best friend. And then I do have another best friend. Her name is Trisha and she and I have known each other since we were, I guess, I think seventh grade. And, um, she lived down the street from me and then she and I were roommates in college and we're really close. Anytime we see each other, it's like we pick back up right where we left off. Like no time has passed whatsoever. And, um, and yeah, so those are my two best friends. They're lifelong best friends. As far as like acquaintances and stuff, um, I don't have a lot. Um, I feel like I'm, my life is so full with my sisters and my friends and my family, um, mainly my family, you know, I'm doing stuff with my immediate family, but then also with my, um, with my parents and grandparents and in-laws. And I don't really have time to have a lot of friends and I'm not in search of any, you know, I, I'm very content with, with the way that, with how many friends and stuff that I have. However, um, sometimes I'll meet people and, you know, we might, I, <laughs> this is a cute little story, but I keep running into this woman and her name is Renee. She's 73 years old. We have run into each other on four separate occasions in different places, not in the same place, always in different places. And um, she originally just walked up to me and she was asking me about my hair. And then we just talked for like 30 or 45 minutes. Every time we see each other, we talk for so long. And I just saw her like two days ago. We just ran into each other again in another place. And we just sit there and talk the whole time. And I, for some reason, I get along very, very well with people that are older than me. I always have. And um, my two best friends, Doug was one of my closest friends. And then I had a friend, Debbie, who she was one of my closest friends. She still is a close friend, but I haven't talked to her in a very long time. They were both um, upwards of 15 years older than me. And um, I don't I don't know what it is that attracts me so much to older people, but um, but I seem to relate really easily with people that are uh, quite a bit older than me. So um, so anyway, we exchanged numbers and stuff. And so we might, we're probably gonna go like um, have lunch or something together because she's just so neat. And she and I are so much alike and she's 73 years old and she's so adorable. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. So anyway, would you ever consider plastic surgery? I don't even know if I have to answer this. I, I'm not, not only will I consider it, I'm already planning it. I'm just kidding. I haven't started planning any plastic surgery, but I think that if I were going to get plastic surgery, the first thing that I would do is get like a brow lift. And I would, I would want it to look like the way that I look when I have a heavy towel on my head, which I almost never do. But on the rare occasion, like, like the last time we were at my in-laws, I had a big heavy towel on my head because I forgot to bring my little towels. And I love the way it just pulls everything up a little bit. I love it. Um, I don't know that I would ever get like eyelid surgery, even though I, I feel like I need it. Um, I don't want to change my appearance that much. 
uh, that would scare me. I've always had hooded eyes and I love hooded eyes. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I feel like hooded eyes have such a bad rap. I love hooded eyes. I've had them since I was young. So many of my favorite models have very hooded eyes. And, um, but as we get older, we start to lose that volume that keeps kind of the skin off of our um, eyelash line, you know? And so that's the only thing that I don't like. If there was a way to just put back the volume there, um, I would love that. I don't want extra eyelid space. I don't want extra mobile eyelid space. I don't think I would look good that way. I, I'm not saying that other women don't. I see women with such beautiful eyes. I've seen even women who have had their eyes done and they look so beautiful. To me, that would be too big of a change and I don't think I would look like myself. And so that is the one thing that I'm just a little bit too afraid of. But I would like to just get like kind of just a, a bra lift where everything just is kind of lifted. Because when I look at older pictures of myself, I can tell that my eyebrows have come down quite a bit. And I feel like as I've gotten older, they just kind of, they start drooping on the sides and stuff like that. And so I would definitely get an eyebrow lift. I would also love to get a little, you know, neck lift or not neck. Is that right? This, just this, just pull this up and then tighten it a little bit. So... I'm definitely not against plastic surgery. I think that if you've been with my channel at all, then you know, you know, I'm not against plastic surgery. I'm not, I'm not against, you know, filler and Botox and stuff like that. I've had filler and I feel like, like when I got my under eye filler, it was life changing to me. My temple filler, love it. I would never want to go back to having hollow temples. I feel like myself again. Like when I had those hollow temples, it was so disturbing to me. It just made me feel very, old you know and and i didn't like it so i love that i was able to fill those in there was a time where i would never want to pull my hair back because it was just so concave on the side and now i've got a temple and i love it so yeah i definitely believe in being proactive when it comes to you know just preserving our appearance it's kind of funny i feel like you know women don't have a lot of women. So there are some women that are just totally against plastic surgery. And if you would even consider it, then you must be so vain and so narcissistic and da 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 da. It's funny because, you know, nobody is getting after women for trying to be proactive when you're trying to preserve your health or you're per trying to preserve your, your body um, or muscle tone or anything like that. The second you start to try to preserve your facial features or your looks, it's like, oh, you're a narcissist, you know? And I just don't, I just don't get it, so. Okay, what is your most defining characteristic? Now, this one was kind of a funny one. It was, it, you know, even though I came up with this question myself, I just didn't know how to answer it because basically I'm me. So it would have to be how other people, you know, define me. And I know things that, that you know, my sisters or my parents have told me, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, so I was curious. And I'm not talking about um, appearance, you know, because a lot of people are going to be like, oh, it's my hair or oh, it's, you know, my eyebrows or my smile or whatever, you know. And so um, that's not what I'm talking about. Like just the most defining characteristic about you, you know, as a person. And so I was like, I just asked my husband, this was literally like 15 minutes ago. I was like, if you had to, you know, sum me up with one like defining characteristic, what would you say that it was? but it can't have anything to do with like, you know, my appearance or looks or something like that. And so he just sat there for a second and he said, loving. And I was like, oh, you know, it, it just made me feel really good. And it actually, um, it actually reminded me of something that my dad had told me when I was like 16 or 17 years old. And I don't remember like the conversation that led up to him saying this to me, but um, we were talking and he said, Jenny, that's why I'm so proud of you. And um, that's one of the things that I love most about you is that you have such a huge heart. And when he said that to me, it meant so, obviously it meant so much. Here I am, 48, 49 years old, and I still remember him saying that to me. And I think it's because, you know, when you're young, parents are like, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so talented. Oh, you're so this, that, you know. But to say something like about your character like that, like you have such a big heart, it just meant a lot to me. And it actually reminds me of something that he literally just said to me, like just a few days, last weekend, we went to this restaurant. We were at an outdoor restaurant and um, 
uh, it was pretty packed and stuff. And I could see this family was looking for a table. It was a husband and wife and two children. And we had a really big table because we're a big family and we always travel like one big circus act. And um, so we had a really big table, but one of the tables we weren't using very much. And so I was like, hey, you know, do y'all want to use this table? Because we don't really need it. And so I was like trying to get it away and pull it over towards them and stuff like that. And um, my dad was like, you're so, it's so neat, Jenny. You are always very aware and concerned with people, you know, the people around you. And, um, and he's like, just the fact that you were trying to help them, you know, find a table. And I was like, oh, but the, but she had like two little kids, you know, she had, um, you know, they were younger. And I just, I remember feeling that way and just being like, oh, where are we going to say We're going to say, you know, so anyway, um, I love that my dad recognizes certain things like that. And then it just makes me feel good because I, I didn't even think about that. You know, I wasn't thinking like, I'm just so concerned about them, you know, but the fact that he drew attention to it just made me feel again, you know, he's, he's focusing on my care, you know, a characteristic of mine. So I just thought that was sweet. So anyway, I don't want to keep going on and on about this beautiful defining characteristic about myself. I'm just kidding. But it just meant so much to me whenever my husband said that, because obviously I'm the mother to our children and so i want him I'm, I'm glad that he thinks that i'm very loving and you know one thing that we say very freely and very often in this family is i love you um every time i talk to my mom or my dad on the phone i always in the conversation i love you they say i love you back we always get off the phone that way always i mean i just come from a very very loving family me and my children i mean we are always saying i love you to each other I would say that me and my daughter say I love you to each other at least five times a day. <laughs> I'm not even joking. And then same with my son. Um, and so anyway, yeah. So loving, loving's the, the word. Okay, what advice would you give younger generations? And this is advice that I, that I give my children all the time. And that is that everything great that you want in life comes with five things. It comes with sacrifice, discipline, dedication, determination, and consistency. And you can put those in any order. Um, you cannot, I'm, I'm talking about if you want, if you want well-behaved children, you have to make sacrifices. You have to be dedicated, determined. You have to practice discipline. You have to um, practice consistency. If you want the best job, if you want a good body, if you want um, just everything great in life requires those things. And one of the biggest ones is sacrifice. Anytime you want something great, you have to make sacrifices for it. That's just, that's just how it goes. And consistency, they're all very important um, and all require discipline. <laughs> so anyway, those are the, those, are, that's what I always tell my children. Um, if whatever you want in life, you have to, you're going to have to do those five things to get it. So what scares you most about aging? Um, I have said this before and um, it's mobility. I, I feel like whenever I see people, especially like whenever I'm in a grocery store, I always just kind of appreciate the circle of life. I, I There's always a baby there. There's always a teenager. There's always um, a young adult, a middle-aged, an older person. And it's just, it's so beautiful if you really just stop and look around at a grocery store. But one thing that I do notice, because I can be a people watcher oftentimes, is that the older that people get, they really like start to curl into themselves. And, you know, they slow down a lot, but, you know, they start getting hunched back. And then, like I said, it's almost like you curl into yourself. Your hands even start to curl. Your, your, um, your elbows start to bend a little forward. I, I see women and men who walk and their knees are just a little bit bent. And I don't, that's my biggest fear. I don't want to ever become immobile, immobile. I don't ever, the other day I threw my back out <laughs> doing something so silly. I was practicing these new ab exercises and all I was doing was like putting my arms out and then kicking crossways back and forth. Somehow I threw my back out. And, um, and for like a week or two weeks, it was about two weeks. I was literally having to like slide out of my bed and it was so painful. And I thought, I do not ever want to be this way 
um, indefinitely. You know, I would die if I didn't know that this was going to eventually correct themselves, correct itself, you know, throwing out your back. It takes a while. It takes a while once you've pulled a muscle. That's what I did. Um, and so uh, that is the thing that scares me the most. I've, I, I know a few people like family members. My grandfather had hip replacement surgery. My uncle did too. And I don't want to get there. But, you know, and those are great things because sometimes, you know, our joints and cartilage and stuff like that just like wear down. Um, so I'm glad that those options are out there. But I, I like to try to be proactive by stretching and exercising and making it just a part of my lifestyle. So so that that doesn't happen. So that's one of my that's one of my biggest fears when it comes to to aging. I know some people think it's that I'm going to end up looking old that's inevitable. We're all going to end up looking old. I'm trying to preserve the best that I can right now um, because I know it's temporary. You know, just like being in my 20s was temporary. Being a teenager was temporary. One thing that I do try to express like to my daughter is to appreciate everything now because you don't appreciate it until it's gone. And so right now I'm trying to practice like appreciating what I have now because I know it's going to be gone, you know, 20 years from now. So do you have any medical conditions and if so what are they and i do have a few i have i didn't realize i had as many as i do um one thing that i have is scoliosis and you could probably tell just with me sitting here um as you can see this um shoulder slopes down like that um if i i would have to pick it up to here this bone also sticks out because of it um whenever i do like um, certain yoga poses. One side of my back stays up higher um, than the other. It's really awkward. My husband was like, oh my gosh, like we all, I knew, I found out whenever I was in my 20s, my husband and I got in a pretty bad car accident, both of our bags deployed, and I ended up going to a chiropractor and they showed me my spine and it was just slightly curved. And, um, and I never did anything to try to fix it. I never, you know, anyway. Um, so also in, in the front here, one of my, it's not my ribs, it's my ab muscles. They're, they're not even my ab muscles. Like I don't have like, like ab muscles like that. They're kind of sporadic. And this side sticks out more than this side. And I don't remember which side of my back is higher, but it's obviously the opposite probably. Um, and so, um, and also one of my, legs is just a little bit longer than the other and then i also have a bad knee but um so so yeah i don't know if you guys can see that maybe one maybe one day i'll show it to you even more close up um i'll show you like my bag and stuff like that because it's a little bit odd i don't think anybody would ever notice it i did have a chiropractic friend um mention it to me one time just because he saw a picture of me standing there and i guess he could tell that one of my shoulders was um, sloped down and it didn't look like I was on, you know, carrying my weight on one side or the other. And so I just thought that was kind of interesting that he noticed it. But, um, but yeah, I also have a bad knee that I injured in a snow skiing accident when I was about 18 years old and I tore ligaments and I literally just lived with it because I did not want to have surgery back then. I lived with it for, I just had surgery on my bad knee a few years ago. And the doctor was like, I can't even believe this. He was so shocked that I had just gone on with my life with these torn ligaments and stuff. And my knee would pop out of place and I would have to pop it back in. There was a couple times where I couldn't pop it back in because it had swelled immediately. And so I had to wait like a week to be able to pop it back in. Um, and I don't know why I put off surgery that long, but I did. And so I just recently had surgery on it. And it's still, I have, if you see my legs, um, one knee looks really swollen and it's all swollen on the inside and on the outside and on the top of my knee but you can notice it most on the inside it's just a it's just a ton of swelling it's just fluid that's just always there and i don't have it on my other knee not only that when i cock back my knee one knee goes like way back here and the other one my bad knee stays forward it doesn't it cannot cock back so it also makes it look a little bit funky like when i'm just standing straight up and down um, it also probably adds to, you know, my lopsided shoulders. But um, so, so yeah, so I've got a bad knee. I also have hypothyroidism. And every time that I say that I have hypothyroidism, 
on YouTube or even um, to family members and stuff, they're like, you mean hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I think they just think hyper because I'm thin, but no, I have hypothyroidism. I take levothyroxine point 0.75, 0 0.75 or 0.075 milligrams every day um, because I have hypothyroidism. Now I had originally, originally I had Hashimoto's and maybe I'll make a video about that because it is a little bit complicating. It's a little bit complicated. But now at this stage, I have hypothyroidism and I've, and I've had it since I was like 36 years old, I think. And so, yeah, I have to take medication because I naturally have a slow metabolism now because my thyroid is all jacked up. And so, um, so yeah, I have to take medicine to keep my to keep my metabolism, you know, ready. I also have something called right bundle branch block. And it's just, um, it's a little heart condition. I, I, I don't think it's much to be worried about. I did read up on it a little bit in the doctors, you know, that I've talked to about it because they noticed it in a, I had, what do you, I can't remember what it's called. When you walk on the treadmill and stuff and they, you know, they monitor your heart and everything. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I had that done and that's when they noticed it. And that was just a, a like maybe five years ago or something like that. And, um, and they just said, you know, if you're ever going to get surgery, you need to go to a cardiologist first to make sure that it's okay. And, and since then I've had my knee done. So it's not something that I'm overly concerned with. It is, it does create, um, a heartbeat that's irregular for me, but the doctors acted like you could have been born with it and nobody just ever detected it up until now. Um, and so because of that, I'm just, I'm not all that concerned about it. However, anytime there's something that's going on and I feel it in my heart, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, should I be worried because I have the right bundle branch block, you know? And so, so it is on my mind a little bit, but I don't worry about it like on a day-to-day -day basis. If you could eliminate one weakness or one fear, what would it be? It would be, I would eliminate the fear of the ocean. I love, I am never happier than I am when I'm at the beach and I can hear the water and I can hear the waves and the sun and the sand and all that stuff. I love, love the beach, but I do not get in the water past my knees. I'm just, I, the fear takes over and I'm like, there's just a shark just, you know, waiting to eat me alive. And I get anxiety even when my kids, you know, go there, go into the water with my husband. I'm just like, oh, what if a shark, you know, um, I hate that fear. That is like one of, I, I just wish I could just, when I was young, I was not afraid at all. I would go out. Some of the boys would try to teach me how to surf and stuff like that. I had no problem going out real deep with them, hopping on a surfboard, giving it a shot and stuff like that. And now I don't know when it, I think it was the movie Jaws probably. And then ever since then, I was just always afraid of, of the ocean. And then two more questions, two more questions. Sorry. If you could go anywhere on vacation, where would it be? It, to me, anywhere tropical, anywhere with a beautiful beach. And like I said, beautiful beach, sand, pina coladas, whatever. It has to be somewhere tropical. Uh, there's a lot of people I know that are like, oh, I want to go to Rome or I want to go to, I don't know, other countries and stuff. And yeah, I don't, I wouldn't mind like going to another country, but it better have like a really beautiful beach, like Australia or something like that. Like if, if I'm going to go on a vacation, I don't care about doing all the sightseeing. I don't care about shopping. I don't care about any of that. I care about relaxing on a beautiful beach somewhere. Just, that's just, just who I am. And then the last question is, do you pray? And we here in this house pray. We pray every single evening together as a family. Um, it's just the last thing that we do. We can never skip it. Even if we go out of town, even if we go, you know, to my in-laws, we just rope them into, they have to be there for, you know, the family prayer. And, um, and yeah, it's just, it's just something that it's just part of our routine every single night. Um, and, and I'll pray if my son is sick, I'll be like, here, let me pray for you real fast. The other day, my daughter was going to go do a performance and right before she ran out the door, I was like, wait, wait, wait. And I just, you know, grabbed her hands and we prayed at the door that she would have a, a spectacular performance and that, and that, um, and that she would bring down the house. And so anyway, um, so yeah, we definitely pray in this house. I was, I was raised I was raised to pray. I was raised to believe and trust in God. 
And um, it's just a big part of my life. No matter how, I don't, I can never, ever, ever get away from um, the way that I was raised in a Christian household. You know, even whenever I was younger and I was doing things that I knew were wrong, like whenever I moved out of my house, um, I was always wrestling with God, you know, um, because I knew, I knew that I was not doing things that I should have been doing, you know, or I knew that I was participating in things that I should not have been participating in. So, um, uh, yeah, I've always had a really, really good relationship with, with God. And, um, it's, yeah, it's just real. It's, it's so real and it's so special and it's, I feel like it's real genuine. And, um, and I feel like my kids feel the same way, especially my daughter. She is very like into Christianity. She listens to sermons almost every morning before school. Like that's what she listens to as she's getting ready um, for the day. And I just think that's so special. So, so anyway, that's all I have. That is all I have. Those were a ton of questions. I feel like I've been sitting here forever. Uh, I hope you're still, if you're still here till the end, thank you so much. And like I said, I would love to hear the answers to um to some of the questions that i asked i would love for you to answer if you want to answer all of them you know that would be great that would be a lot of typing but um but anyway yeah i would love to hear your answers and if you're a creator and you you know do this tag like i said do you do not have to say where these questions came from but i would just love to hear your answers i would love for you to tell me you know that you made this video because i would love to hear your answers too so anyway thank you for watching i hope you're having a fabulous weekend and hopefully I will see you back here next week.